Good afternoon, everybody. Many thanks for the invitation to, to have this presentation. I uh, have really appreciated the previous presentation, especially the one from uh, from Airbus, who, who have decided to make a focus on the smart industry, and uh, and I will try to, to to bring another overview of all the impact of the digital uh, transformation for for Naval Group and uh, the defense and uh, system uh, that are related to the to the French Navy and. Uh, the foreign uh, foreign navy. Uh, I've been told that uh, you are not specially used to uh, industry dedicated to defense, so perhaps it's uh, one of the very first time. But uh, I should. I, I won't speak about weapons and war, and only speak of technology and uh, the the impact of digitalization. Uh, it is not a slide to make a promotion of Naval Group. I just need to 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 give you some figures in order to illustrate my speech. After that. So Naval Group, uh, perhaps uh, some of you are knowing uh, Naval Group. Naval Group is a, a young company, a young company of uh, more than, uh, nearly than 400 years. Uh, we, we were, we were um, uh, a direction of the MOD uh, since the, the turn of the century, and uh, we are now a private company with uh, two main uh, shareholders. Uh, Obviously, for 350 years, uh, there were only one customer, which was uh, the French Navy. And now we have extended international up to have uh, 50 uh, client Navy around the world. And it is really uh, important for us. Uh, just uh, to have perhaps the number of people only, uh, 13,000 people. And uh, it, uh, it is really uh, difficult to, to achieve all the challenge we have. Uh, uh, in Naval Group. Uh, why? So uh, we are involved on the full life of the, the warship. Uh, from the very beginning of the first design, the building, maintenance in operational condition, up to the retirement of any type of ship. Ship, submarine, and surface ship. Submarine from the very conventional powered submarine up to nuclear powered, and even uh, the, the submarine uh, which are incurring uh, uh, nuclear missile for the French deterrence and uh, surface ship from the very light frigate up to the aircraft carrier which is uh, nuclear powered as well. Uh, so the, the scope of product is very large. Uh, I am proud to say that there is no other company in the world doing the same. Obviously the United States, Russia and the United Kingdom have the same type of product but not doing by the same company. So it is a really cute challenge to, to achieve that, and uh, we, we see the challenge with very uh, a lot of uh, humility. So um, uh, what about our product? Uh, our products are very specific. Uh, they are very complex, very unique. Um, I should say that as for Airbus, uh, the, the life duration of our product is very long. Uh, 40 years, uh, and uh, if you take into account the beginning, the very first design studies up to the retirement of the end of a one fleet, you can cross the century. For a SSBN, you have uh, close to uh, 80 years with the same product. So we have the challenge to keep the knowledge, the industrial means to be able to, to maintain old ship, and we have to gather new talents to design new ship for the future. Uh, we have some figures on the, on the slide uh, in terms of uh, number of kilometers of cables, of connection, uh, of parts, elementary parts, and uh, there is a connection with the, the number of lines of code. Uh, our ship are designed to be a real-time uh, uh, design system, uh, and you, you can understand that uh, when a missile is coming on the frigate, the time to decide if uh, we have to launch countermeasure is uh, very less than uh, seven seconds. So we, we need to have a very accurate system to decide and to improve insight for the, for the, for the Navy. The other uh, problem for us, for, the, for this specific sector, is uh, uh, the comparison between the, the life duration and the improvement of technology. 
uh, in the past, I mean in the 60s, when we were designing a new ship, 40 years old of, uh, of duration, we could wait for the midlife to make what we called the midlife refit and to, to bring a new improvement to the, to the ship so that the, 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 the mission can be achieved at a very high level to the end of the life. Today, it's no more possible. Today, you change your smartphone every, every two years, and the, the technology, the pace of time is increasingly, and the time between the, 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 the decision to make a new program and the time to deliver the program, 10 years, is far too long. So we have to design system uh, that are a long life duration, but the ability to be improved continuously. There is no, no sense to, to have a, a mid-life refit. We can, we have to, to, to propose service that can be updated as you have a, an, an updatement of your operating system on, on your smartphone. But we have nuclear safety to achieve, we have say, diving safety to achieve, we have certification for weapons to achieve. So, they are very mandatory uh, uh, opposition in our, uh, in our design. Uh, as uh, it has been said, um, the, the number of uh, disruption in all technology is uh, impressive. Uh, it is uh, quite uh, interesting for, new, for the designer to, to address new capabilities, but the ability to design the new system and to refit the whole system needs for us to modify uh, to modify our product, to digitalize the product in order they, they can be open, open and can be uh, regularly updated to modify our service. I have not said that we have addressing a lot of service like maintenance, like training, like uh, naval base uh, infrastructure. So there are many services that can propose and we need to digitalize the service and obviously the company, because a company all fashion can't be able to digitalize and to, to propose product with the high capability. Um, we have uh, more or less 400 uh, fields of uh, R&D project at the same time. They are gathered in uh, 50 uh, technological fields and these 50 technological fields are driven by a roadmap, obviously. Uh, this roadmap is focused on the, the importance for the, for the end user, which is the Navy, and I can sum very quickly uh, the importance for the Navy in three main uh, pillars. Informance, information dominance, which means uh, to know better than others and before the others. Engagement dominance, which gathers the ability to, to resist either for the cyber safety, either for the self the robustness or the, the performance of our weapons, and then the ability to remain at sea. It, it addresses as well the energy and the autonomy and the ability to remain at sea when the, the, the sea is a very high sea state. Um, I have tried to sum in only in one side, very, very simply, sorry for the level, uh, very simply, uh, all the impacts of digital in our way to design a new product. I will begin first, if I can, by the smart ship. The smart ship is a, a, a ship fully connected, blended of sensors, cyber secured, highly communicated. Obviously, in face of the smart ship, we have threats, and the threats are evaluating as quickly as the disruption technology we have seen before. And we need to be in a competitive way. The smart ship is not alone, of course. We can speak of drones, headquarters, and only uh, NATO alliance for the French Navy. And we need to uh, improve the ability to, to operate sensors of any type of uh, warship at sea, to use the sensors of any type of uh, sensors at sea, the weapons, and we have to have a, a simulated uh, real-time common situation, technical situation between all the platform. Uh, the smart ship is always connected with the smart yard. Indeed, we can see that Naval Group is a ship, a ship which is navigating uh, since uh, 400 years, 
uh, a ship who has crossed three uh, industrial revolutions and tried to face the fourth one. And the smart yard uh, has a uh, sorry. The smart yard, the connection between the smart yard and the smart ship is the twin ship, which is another roadmap inside. The twin ship is a fully representative ship of the, of the ship, fully digitalized, which is used from the very beginning of the design to the evolution and the implement of new capacity for the, for the sailor at, uh, on board. And the smart yard uh, has also its competitors, also its provider and customers, and is digitalized fully. What are the common points between these two ships, the smart ship and the smart yard? In both cases, we try to improve the ability of men, either the sailor or the engineer, the technical part, and the workers. We need to, to bring to them insight so that the, the efficiency of their job is increased. We need to have strong communication, obviously for the smart yard, which is at land, we, benef we take benefit of the improvement that is already done of 5G and uh, other G and 12G, I don't know. But when we are at sea, how do we do? When we are submerged, how do we do? And we need to improve the ability to communicate, otherwise it's bullshit. We need to improve networks on the ship as well on the land. We need to have data centers to have big data analytics, obviously in artificial intelligence, cyber safety, and both of all is the data. There will be nothing if there is no data. When we are speaking of data on the, on the ship, in the past, the data was the data coming from the radar and sonar and uh, all communication. But uh, today, uh, even the temperature of pump uh, the rotation speed of a turbine is a data. And when we combine all the data together, we bring an insight for the sailor for the best efficiency at sea. But the case is how do we, how we, how we'll be sure to have the data, the right data, to have the ability to enrich the data and bring this insight to the, to the sailor. And you know that there will be an economy around the data. It makes money. And this is, and I'm sure that the, 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 best, uh, the, the, the best effort we have to do with, uh, with the sailor and uh, all the suppliers of uh, our future ship. I have three slides to make a very quick overview of, on three uh, of the previous roadmap, because the smart ship is a roadmap, the smart yard is a roadmap, the twin ship is a roadmap, uh, and all the other aspects are roadmap we are focusing and uh, we are improving but not alone because uh, the money we have to spend is far too impressive and we need to be connected to the right people to the right company and to have a partnership very efficient to to achieve the ambition we have worship worship uh, coming from the very first design to the end the digital ship the twin ship can be an id an idea of the ship uh, that can help to make uh, very strong simulation, multi-physics simulation, and operational simulation. Uh, if you have a, a, a fully representative uh, ship, you can even imagine what's the performance of, uh, of the ship uh, with some defects on board to, to help the sailor to have the best strategy, even if it is not 100% efficient, but to be the best at sea. The twin yard, some example of uh, many uh, type of uh, development we are focusing on. The 3D scan. 3D scan is very interesting because today uh, you have the ability to scan a full ship in very a couple of days, and it helps to have the same ship as designed, as built. When you have the, the drawing of the submarine or the ship as designed you know that this as design is given to the manufacturing team and there are tolerances. So you, you don't have any uh, ship really uh, built, 
strictly exactly uh, compliant with the as uh, as design because uh, uh, you have uh, you have specific tolerance that are uh, that are on one ship and not on the other one uh, thanks to the scan you have a fully as built and it's very important to have this as built when you follow the the, com the behavior of the of the ship during this whole this during this whole life additive manufacturing is an improvement very important for us we are trying to, uh, to change the way of building new, our propeller and to have a very new design helped by the, the additive manufacturing, cognitive and physical assistance to help uh, the, um, the, the workers and to, 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 to help them to make very strong efforts very quickly and safely, enhance uh, operator thanks to uh, virtual uh, yeah, real virtuality, virtual reality or augmented reality as well, as we have seen on uh, for Airbus. And the new service uh, we are working on as uh, uh, predictive maintenance, uh, when you have all the data of the ship in real time, you have the ability to predict uh, if uh, one pump will uh, defect, if uh, one weapon will not be efficient, uh, or to help to manage the, the energy consumption on board, uh, you, you can bring very, very strong assistance to the, to the ship at sea. Severe security and training. The training, the ability to, to train our new sailors for a ship which is not yet be designed and to help to, to have an interface between the, the training of the, of the Navy and the, the ship which is uh, already under, under building. Mm -hmm.